you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold penny i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2022 honda insight courtesy of apple honda in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so i'm in this one today because there actually are a couple changes for the 2022 insight of course you get great mpgs in this one then as well so if you got a long commute this may just be the one for you but in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel exhaust clip we'll try it at least sound system all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing all right so when it comes to pricing let me of course start with trim levels there are two of them for this year and this is the major change for the 2022 insight there will be no more lx trim level for this particular model year so ex trim level which actually is the one we have today will start at twenty five thousand two hundred and ten dollars then you have the touring which is going to start at twenty nine thousand two hundred and forty dollars but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the insight is going to be the same powering this beast is a 1.5 liter atkinson cycle inline four cylinder with honda's two motor hybrid system then in addition to that putting on 129 horsepower with the motor at 4,000 rpm with the combined horsepower that bumps it up to 151 horsepower 197 pound feet of torque coming in at zero rpm because this is a hybrid after all it's instant torque but power sent to the front wheels through a cbt zero to 60 time get this you guys 7.3 seconds in a hybrid that is pretty darn cool we will of course be testing that out in a little bit here but overall what everybody wants to know mpg numbers are going to come in at 55 in the city 49 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do that acceleration test here in our insight i did want to mention there are a few different driving modes for the insight all of those buttons are located kind of directly behind the shift buttons and they will include econ sport and ev mode adjusting things like the shift points a throttle response the climate control system actually as well so if you put it in that econ mode it's gonna dial back the climate control like the ac a little bit on hotter days to save you a little bit there but ev mode of course being full electric mode you got to be fully charged up for that but overall pretty cool a lot of adjustments can certainly be had there but let's go ahead and put it in that sport driving mode and it did immediately downshift for me there or kind of holds the rpms at a much higher level i should say giving you more power on demand so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway here and let's see if uh see if that zero to 60 and 7.3 really feels that way all right you guys in three two one <laughs> a little bit of skidding there wow yep sounds like a cvt it's actually not that bad. It's plenty more than you would expect from a hybrid. So if I'm being quite honest, it's really a lot more than I expected from the Insight. Definitely not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.1 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.2 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it's going to come in at a respectable 122 feet. To be quite honest, that's pretty average for most sedans out there right now so absolutely no issues with that 60 to zero stopping distance braking feel feels a little bit different than you may be used to if you're not used to driving a hybrid you can definitely tell it is one of those hybrid braking feels but having said that it's perfectly fine you certainly will get used to it i've had no issues with the braking feel on this thing in my short test drive here today as far as suspension and handling goes up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars then as well as far as the ride quality goes we're actually about to hit a super big bump here let's see it actually impresses me i gotta be honest a lot better than i thought it would be soaking up pennsylvania's road imperfections actually quite nicely i gotta be honest so well done honda for that you did pretty good with the ride quality here in the inside as far as steering feel goes that's the first thing i muttered to myself let me see if i can find the clip of it let me just insert it right here for you guys Ooh, nice steering feel not expect that it is weighted extremely nicely and more than i expected here on the inside and what i mean by that is it's definitely on the heavier side of things which i absolutely love typically that heavier steering feel comes on sports cars but not definitely not hybrids so 
Well done Honda with the steering feel. Really Honda always nails the steering feel. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised there, but steering feel is definitely very nice here in the inside. As far as cabin noise goes, you get a little bit of road noise. You guys might be able to hear that right now. So it's not something that should annoy you, but it's pretty much as expected here. So you get a little bit of that. But as far as visibility goes, that is 100% on point. I can see perfectly fine out of my rear view mirror. So absolutely no issues there. And in addition to that, if you were to go with the touring trim level that we don't have here today, you would also get rain sensing windshield wipers, which is always nice. Essentially what that is, is whenever the inside detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on this windshield wiper. So it's just one less thing you got to worry about. So that's super cool there as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Honda Insight. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2022 Honda Insight finished in modern steel metallic. In case anybody was curious of our exterior color name we had here today, let's go ahead and start up front. This one has a very Accord-ish looking front end, which makes it look very good in my personal opinion to the sides. LED headlights actually do come standard for both trim levels of the Insight, which is pretty cool. You don't always get that. Automatic feature coming with that as well, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard. And if you were to go with the touring trim level only, you will also get LED fog lights down below. But that pretty much rounds out the front of it, actually. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the Insight. So, but now to the side of this Insight here, chrome window surrounds do come standard. When it comes to those side mirrors, they are heated, power adjustable, body colored side mirrors. If you were to go with the Touring though, you will get LED integrated turn signals with some chrome accents actually on those side mirrors as well. And of course, just in front of that, you will find some hybrid badging found on the front fender, of course, since the Insight is a hybrid. <laughs> when it comes to the door handles, they will also differ among Amongst those two trim levels, there will be body color door handles for the EX that we have today. And then you will find some chrome accents kind of to tie in with the side mirrors if you were to go with that touring trim level at least. So I wanted to mention that. Then taking a look down at the wheel setup, again, they will differ amongst the trim levels. 16 inch alloys coming with the EX, 17 inch alloy wheels then coming with the touring. But that about rounds out the side of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around back, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top there, just below that, kind of an inner integrated rear spoiler look to it so we'll say that's not technically a rear spoiler but it does look pretty darn good back there we'll say that to the sides led taillights coming standard on the insight you gotta love that and towards the bottom i will say chrome accents can be found on the lower portion of the rear bumper only for the touring otherwise you're going to get that matte black look that we currently have today but anyways just below it all i think you guys can see that there is a tucked away single exhaust outlet so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next we're going to give this a shot it is a hybrid keep in mind but as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so but now since we are around back of the Insight, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob itself to unlock it. There's also a button on the driver's side door and there is a button on the trunk itself. So any of those ways are perfectly fine. It is a manual trunk, but once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 15.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space than if you needed it. Did want to also mention that there is some cargo lighting back there, and if you are wondering if there was a spare tire, there is not, but there is a decent amount of in-floor storage back there and a tire inflator kit in case you were curious. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom, which is going to come in at 37.4 inches. So for reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back there. I did want to mention rear ventilation coming with the touring, rear center armrest with cup holders coming for either trim level. And unfortunately, there is no rear charging ports back there. That's something I always look for. But overall, I do like the center armrest with cup holders. But then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the EX. Touring trim level, however, is going to add an eight-way power driver's seat, leather finish to that seating, heated front seats, and a four-way power adjustable passenger seat then as well. But actually, overall, 
Seats are pretty darn comfy in our EX trim level, even though they're cloth, even though they're not as adjustable as the touring trim level, they still are very comfortable, I will say that. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the steering wheel. It is manually adjustable, it is tilt and telescoping. It is urethane wrapped if you were to go with the EX, but then leather wrapped if you were to go with the touring. That pretty much rounds that out. But now, let's go ahead and take a look at the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key. You have this nice blue hue with the Honda logo on the one side of the key, and then when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and then the circular button that says hold that is going to be your remote start which of course comes standard to both trims along with a push button start so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there and so once started up, this actually is a fairly cool looking digital gauge cluster. You have the battery charge indicator found on your left and your speedometer found on your right. And of course, to control what is on that digital gauge cluster, there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side. So you can really display whatever you want up there. Like it can tell you your average miles per gallon at any given time. It could tell you your power flow information. It could tell you how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's a digital speedometer, audio information, Bluetooth information. The list goes on when you need your next oil change pretty much everything you could possibly want up there so that's pretty cool i will say that but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality if you wanted a power moonroof you do have to go with the touring trim level so i wanted to mention that and pretty much the touring trim level really gives you everything on this one so the power moonroof also home link controls for up to three different garage doors i always like that dual zoom climate control coming with the touring auto dimming rear view mirror also coming with the touring trim level so pretty much everything there but i will say you still get automatic climate control even with our e EX trim level here today so I can set the temperature that I want it to be at and it's automatically going to hit that temperature for me so that's pretty cool. I do like the soft touch material found just above the passenger side glove box with the contrast stitching. It feels like a leatherette wrapped material so that is pretty cool as well. Also like this soft touch recycled feel on the doors here with the contrast stitching that is pretty cool as well. So in case I didn't mention it already as far as how to put this thing in drive it is all button set up so it's not like a traditional shifter. D is for drive and it's for neutral or it's for reverse p is for park of course in case anybody didn't know that already just to the right of that though you have a place to put your cell phone there are two usb charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet as well just behind that is where you're going to find your drive modes to the left of that electromechanical parking brake just behind that you will find dual cup holders and there is a little bit of storage then actually a decent amount of storage if i'm being honest within that center armrest then as well so overall interior quality is pretty practical i will say that definitely everything you need on the inside but now let's make our way to the infotainment screen there is an eight inch color touchscreen display that comes standard on both trims bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard android auto apple carplay also coming standard factory navigation system is only going to come with the touring trim level if you wanted that although you don't really need it as long as you have a smartphone these days because you can display navigation up there with that Radio information you can also check out up there as well. And when it comes to the sound systems, there are eight speakers with 180 watts for the EX and then 10 speakers with 450 watts then for the touring. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> pretty elaborate song there but i don't know sound system was all right actually eight speakers is decent for this vehicle usually you're going to find a six speaker sound system in vehicles like this so eight speakers i don't know it's pretty cool so sound system was just okay there if you wanted more bass if you wanted more clarity definitely go with the touring trim level that's going to give it to you but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the insight in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard on this one with three different angles which is pretty cool and of course that is going to let you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so first let me start by mentioning iihs top safety pick plus which is the very highest designation given by iihs so that's pretty much says it all right there honestly front side side curtain airbags do come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door docks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard across the board is going to be honda sensing you gotta love that that gives you a collision mitigation braking system road departure mitigation system adaptive cruise control lane keep assist traffic sign recognition forward collision warning lane departure warning automatic high beams and a blind spot information system with rear cross traffic alert as well and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the insight 
pretty darn good acceleration, if I'm being honest, for a hybrid. I will say that. 0 to 16, 7.3, and it felt darn quick as well. And with that instant torque, because of the electric motors, you gotta love that. So, actually, pretty decent acceleration for this one. Pretty good styling as well, because it takes a lot of exterior styling cues from the Accord, which is a good thing, in my opinion. That car looks dang good, so therefore, this one looks dang good as well, in my personal opinion, at least. Great MPGs, especially if you're doing a lot of city driving. 55 miles per gallon in the city is great. Also great reliability. That's pretty much standard with Honda across the board for the most part. As far as room for improvement goes, the infotainment is slightly outdated. Typically you got bigger screens these days. And in addition to that, when you actually hit a button on this infotainment screen, there is a slight delay to it as well, comparatively speaking to some of the other infotainment systems that I've been testing. Also ambient lighting would be pretty cool to see in this one. I wouldn't mind being able to change the color of that ambient lighting as well but other than that that's pretty much all i got as far as room for improvement goes so let me know what you guys think of the insight in the comment section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on tiktok at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see short clips of these vehicles before they actually get to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe to the bell notification button if you're in a new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know when I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay